pizza inserts. I absolutely hate them. I can never press them in straight. It just doesn't work out. So, how hard can it be to build a heat set insert press? The soldering iron holder is a press fit tube that the soldering iron can fit in with four bolts to attach it to the rest of the carriage. The carriage is going to have some T-slots to accept nuts on the end of the bolts on the holder. There's going to be lots of T-slots in this project. I like the adjustability. The body of the press also gets some T-slots. This is what the carriage is going to slide in and it should help keep it nice and straight. Now we can print these and get onto making the moving part of the assembly. Now, as for the gears, Fusion has a very handy plugin that has all sorts of parameters you can adjust and it spits out a gear for you. We're going to have one gear fixed to the assembly and a rack gear on the carriage that lets it slide up and down. This was surprisingly tricky to make the rack. I'm sure there's an easier way to do it. I couldn't find one. Now we have all the parts printed, we can do a first assembly to see if it actually works. And we get the holder and put in four M3 bolts, just normal bolts, they'll have nuts on the ends that will go into the T-slots on the carriage. Now this is surprisingly smooth for the first print, I'm quite happy with it, and actually it was the final version all the way to the end, so good work. In tightening the bolts holds it in place completely fine, even with the weight of the soldering iron in it. Now, for the axle I'm using some 5mm aluminium rods. Now, by now, you'd think I'd have learnt to not attach the camera to the same surface I'm sawing on, or this happens. The bearings have an exact ID of 5mm, and the rod is a little over that, so I had to do some filing. A lot of filing. I pushed the bearing into the hole and now it's time to fit the gear. This was a little fiddly because for some reason I put a cover on the body, I'm not quite sure why, nothing tricky, just tedious.
Now, some bright spark thought it'd be quick and easy to hold the gear and the rod together using super glue. And let me tell you now, this was a mistake. One that I made many times before I actually learned. I hate super glue. Now we make version 2, which has some improvements. So, the improvements. Well, I added gears on both sides, because the rack needs to go on both sides to help it go up and down straight. I don't know what I was thinking when I was designing. But also, I the gears. I needed another gear in there to change directions to make using the press more intuitive. I want the carriage to come down as I pull the handle toward me and go up as it pushes back. Now for the second assembly I was able to glue the idler gears to their axles before pushing them into the bearings so there was no risk of gluing the bearings together. Okay. Now we can test the carriage in the new assembly. It worked absolutely fine, except there's a bit too much room in the T-slots at the bottom. So for the next print, I'll just have to add some more material there. This was the point where I messed up again. I carried on using super glue. I thought to myself, oh, this time it'll be fine. It's just the weird cover, there was no space, that's why the glue failed. And, uh, yeah, I was completely wrong. <laughs> I'm never using super glue again. I hate it. Like, look at this. You squeeze it hard because nothing's coming out, and then too much comes out. It's... it's the worst! And it's so sticky, it gets everywhere, it stays on your fingers, I hate it. I am never using super glue ever again. Now, after the super glue debacle, I needed a new way to attach the gears to the rods. And I bought a tap and die set. I completely realised the irony of buying it, but these musts. So I modelled and printed some hubs that will go into the gears to hold them at exactly the right spot. The threads were just too fine to print into the hubs, so I had to buy a tap. It's fine. And this is this is my first time using a tap, and it felt weirdly trickier than I thought it would. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing wrong. This ridiculous vice thing didn't actually help, so I did it the rest in my hands, but let me know what's wrong. This is some 3mm aluminium plate and I've transferred the holes from the assembly onto it. I'm just going to drill them out and this is what's going to hold the press up. Now that that's bolted on, I can attach the hubs to the rod and the gears and they work great. They're tiny but they don't need to be torqued on too much so they work fine. I then printed another piece, added a set screw and pushed some rod in to make a handle. And this is so, so smooth. I'm impressed. I was excited to do the first test, so I made a quick stand. That has a problem, you'll see, I did fix it afterwards. I 
printed out a test piece with a hole for an M6 insert, turned the soldering iron on, waited for it to heat up and found the problem. Now you can see here, in my eagerness to get to the first test, I didn't bolt the stand to the plate, so uh, yeah, it lifted. But I came back after this, bolted them together, I just jumped the gun, it works great now. Now that I'm holding the plate inside the base, it's actually working. As you can see, it's uh, still shifted a bit, but the insert is pressed in and it looks good. Let's see. I also made sure that when the soldering iron is fully bottomed out and the handle is all the way down, it doesn't contact the 3D printed base. Safety first. This insert is 100 times better than I can do by hand. It is so good. Now, it's by no means perfect. There's a bit of drift at the top. This is a 40mm bolt. But, this is so much straighter than I can do. I'm so pleased with this. It's completely ridiculous. Not pretty, but it works. Thank you for watching.